Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Today I got a treat for you. I got to show you my new toy. My campus commute bike. The 2019 Honda Monkey. Even big people can have fun, right? <laughs> this is the 2019 Honda Monkey. This bike is based on the Honda Grom platform. It's got a 125cc fuel injected single cylinder uh, four stroke engine. And uh, it's based on the styling of the 1960s Honda Monkey. Uh, I always, uh, my first bike was a 1980 Honda XL80. Here, I'll show you a picture of it. And I loved that bike. I learned to ride on that. It was an 80cc four speed motorcycle, and I, I wasn't allowed to ride it on the street, but I rode it through the woods and, the, and over the, in the pastures. And, uh, Really, that's where I learned how to ride a motorcycle, and I think everybody ought to start off on dirt. But um, I was looking for something to ride ride to work every day. For me, work is about maybe three miles. We'll go on that journey here in a little bit. But I needed something that I could park close to my office. It was economical. But most of all, I liked the look of it, and it was fun and comfortable to ride. And man, is this it or what? This bike is so cool. Let me show you around what this thing looks like. I love the chrome fenders on this front and back. It's got that that retro 60s look and they're metal. They're not they're not plastic. Uh, it's got rugged 12 inch off-road tires. Uh, one of our adventures, we'll take this guy to Colorado and we'll just see exactly how it performs off-road. Now this bike is brand new. Uh, it just came out last week. As a matter of fact, this is the first one in my city. It only comes in two colors. It comes in this uh, banana yellow, and then it comes in the famous Honda Red. Uh, I, I'm a red guy. I like red. But this yellow looks fantastic on this little bike. Um, they hadn't come out with any accessories for it yet because it is so new. There are some things that I'd like to do. I'd like to delete that that giant rear plastic mud flap there um, with a, but I'll need some kind of license plate relocator bracket uh, I need an old guy accessory I may have designed this myself a um, Yeti cup holder on the front of it there so when I ride to work every day I can carry my drink with me but it's a it's a fantastic bike it's got disc brakes front and back uh, this model is not the ABS model. The ABS model is a couple hundred extra dollars. Um, but this bike doesn't really need ABS. Matter of fact, this one has ABS. The back brake is anti-locking. It just doesn't have enough back brake to lock the tire up. It's, uh, it's not a good back brake. The front brake is plenty strong, but if you stand on the front brake, it does tend to dive. And I think that's what the uh, anti-lock brake model does is, is it keeps the bike level and prevents that front brake for the front end from diving down under heavy braking. Now for me, I've been riding motorcycles for 40 years and so that's not a problem. I understand how this works. I understand how to work that and uh, it, I don't need anti-lock brakes. I think that's an extra three, two or three hundred dollars that, that I don't need to spend. Now the monkey bike is a little expensive at $39.99. That's the that's the retail price on it. Of course, right now they're brand new. You're going to pay full retail. Um, because my dealer told me that uh, right now, at least until 2019, it's, it's now uh, October of 2018, uh, that they're only getting one of these in a month. And so this is the only one that they're getting all month. And so these are going to be kind of hard to come by for a while. Um, but anyway, the uh, watching videos online, Apparently that some of the ones in, in Europe are coming with uh, alarm systems on them and remote controls. This one does not have that. It's just got a single key, just like, uh, you know, every other bike. Uh, but maybe once this gets going, you can get that module and maybe add it to it later. Um, we'll, we'll see if we can't do that. Uh, one of the weaknesses of this bike, is, if you're going to use it off-road, is you'll notice that the exhaust hangs below the frame, and it would be easy to crunch that on a rock if you were really off-roading this this little bike um, and so you'd have to be careful of something like that now for me I'm 6'3 230 so I'm, I'm a big boy um, and but this little bike hauls me around no problem at all 
Uh, it's uh, 65 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour uh, is attainable for me, although it likes to cruise at around 45 to 50 miles per hour is about top end on this little bike, which, you know, if you stay off the highways, that's fine for me. We'll go on my little trip to work, and you'll see that the way I have to go, I don't ever have to get above 30 miles per hour to get to work. Um, matter of fact, a lot of the trip is, is 10 miles per hour, and so I can't go very fast. The uh, seat on this bike is fantastic. It's wide, it's flat, and it's super squishy soft. And for me, that was a big plus. Uh, it's very, very comfortable. I don't. The Grom I said on that, the seat's hard and, and narrow, and that's a young man's bike. This is an old man's, not an old man's bike. This is anybody's bike. This bike is super comfortable to ride. You can ride it all day and and never get tired of riding it. Let's take this on an adventure. We'll go on a little ride and I'll show you I'll show you my commute ride to work. This is not a bike that that I would ride around town a whole lot. I've got plenty of other vehicles. Uh, because you know, we live in a college town and the people here we've got thirty thousand bad drivers, college age drivers in our town and they don't look out for motorcycles and they're trying to kill you at all times. So if you've been riding motorcycles a long time, you know that you have to ride defensive to stay alive. Um, but anyway, I'll take you on my commute and I'll show you why this bike is absolutely perfect for me. So hang on. Okay, here we go. Pulled out of the driveway, out of the garage. Let's go to work. So the audio here is really kind of terrible. The wind was really blowing hard this afternoon on this little ride, but uh, you can see right away that the bike accelerates really crisply with, uh, with a big old boy on it. And uh, it's something that you need to get used to when you first get this because you just can't pull out in traffic because it's not certainly not as powerful as a, as a big motorcycle would be. And so you have to make sure that there's plenty of room as you're riding. But my commute takes me uh, through my neighborhood, as you can see. Hello, neighbors. So riding like this through this kind of little neighborhood ride is really where this bike is at home. This is a, and it's just a pleasure to ride. It's so much fun. It's snappy, it stops good. Uh, and you know, you have to use the gears to gear down when you come up to a stop sign. It's like I said, the rear brake is just, it's marginal at best. Uh, I'm used to a bigger bike where if you were to stomp on the rear brake, you could, you know, you could skid it into a, you know, to a stop, slide it around a little bit. There's no slide in the rear brake on this bike. It is just, uh, it's squishy and it works, but it's certainly, I never could get it to, uh, to skid the tire with me on it. Um, and so... The front brake, I think, is pretty good. You you can definitely wash the front end out if you're not careful. If you just if you just trounce on the front brake, it's gonna it's gonna stop you pretty quick. And it and it wants to really dive here. But uh, you see, I'm coming up to really the first big intersection. This is a 45 mile an hour road. I don't have to go on this road. I just cross over it. But it's uh it's four lanes of pretty heavy traffic, and this is the most heavily traffic road that I have to cross on my commute to work. Anyway, here comes some fellows in a little red truck. Maybe we can just get right in behind them. For those of you who ride motorcycles, you know what I'm talking about, but when you're following a car, like this little red truck, you ever follow somebody that had their window cracked a little bit and they were smoking something of, I don't know, questionable origin? Oh yeah, check out this Honda right here. Wham! Somebody ran right into the back of that car. Anyway, when somebody in front of you is smoking something that's uh, questionable, I guess, you you certainly know it immediately because it's very distinctive and, you know, in the, you're in the wind right behind these people. It's several times I've noticed that you think, well, look who's having fun today, huh? <laughs> anyway. I think these people were having a good time on the way to wherever they were going. So my journey takes me here through. This is a there's no traffic on this road. This little red truck is 
is even odd to see this coming through here, but this is usually no traffic at all. And then there's a shared pathway here. What's those columns uh, that I can whip through here and uh, and come out in another parking lot that kind of avoids going on a major traffic road. So the hardest part here is just dodging these bollards as you go through. And now we're headed through a parking lot here. This is kind of a back way to keep me off of the road because the, the main road that goes over the university where I work is a 55 mile an hour road and you get out that one in the morning at 8 o'clock when the sun is shining straight down the road sun shines the road is east west and so the sun coming up in the east shines right in your eyes and so on somebody's small little bike like I'm on um, it's certainly easy to miss somebody and when you have unexperienced drivers going to school um, they'll try and flatten you so you have to be careful so here's your one more intersection this is a red light this now this this red light has a has a uh, proximity switch here that's trying that you have to trip to uh, alert that the light is you know that you're there to, for the stoplight and this little bike did trip it so it takes a second but it did recognize me and uh, and let me through so this is going next to the uh, hospital here so we're going to be going right through the middle of the hospital district and the only bad thing about that is, well, I guess it's not bad, it's a good thing, is that traffic along this road, because the hospital's on one side and the parking lot's on the other side, uh, there's a lot of people tra crossing this road on foot, and so the speed limit here, as you can see by this sign coming up, is 10 miles an hour. Now, let me tell you, 10 miles an hour is tough to do, because, you know, you're in first gear at 10 miles an hour, and... Uh, you know, you're just barely staying upright. <laughs> just to, your your walking speed. As a matter of fact, I was coming back today, and I put my feet down on the ground, and I could let my feet touch the ground in that kind of running speed on the bicycle on the on the bicycle on the motorcycle. Um, I think I could run this fast. So, but usually you'll get behind somebody across here that's speeding, and then they're not looking for me, but. I try and abide by the rules if I can, as we all should, right? So you can see the hospital there. And then uh, it's on the university property at this time. We're actually on the university. So you can see I don't have to ride very far to get on university property. I just got to make my way over to mechanical engineering. So now the speed limit comes back up to... Uh, 20 miles an hour here after this next little corner. Uh, all traffic on campus is 20 miles an hour and so for bicycles and pedestrians obviously. Um, but anyway for this little bike this is kind of the the perfect environment for it because I never have to scream around. And so at about 90 miles per gallon uh, this little bike will let uh, gas. I'll have to fill it up probably once every two weeks. So it'll take a little over about a gallon and a half to fill it up once every two weeks. And uh, and with that, you know, it'll cost me about four dollars to fill it up at this time. So that's pretty cheap commuting. But I don't really do it for the money. I do it because I enjoy riding, and uh, it's a ball to ride here. So. Crossing the final bridge onto uh, campus, and you can see we're coming up to the dorms. And I'm on campus now. Now, in the morning, this is kind of crazy because the students are just all over this road. This ride is on a Sunday where it's not very crowded, and so um, it's nice and pleasant to go for a ride on a Sunday. But. Uh, we're at about two and a half, maybe three miles here from the house all the way over to campus. And so I think this is where this bike is at home. Like I said, if you've got a if you got a 30 or 40 mile commute 
this is not the bike for you or you have to drive in interstate traffic or really congested areas this is not the bike for you because it is just not fast enough to pull you around in traffic to to get out of the way if you had to uh, it you know at 50 miles an hour you're you're full throttle uh, it's all it can do and the nice thing about having a bigger bike a powerful bike is you can accelerate or maneuver to get out of the way if you have to with this thing it's all it can do to do that speed and so you need to be in an environment like this where the demand on the throttle is not too high and so for me this is the absolute perfect thing and I've been searching for something like this I thought about getting the little Honda Cub that's coming out but I really like the idea of a clutch versus an automatic clutch like those the thing that I had to had automatic clutch was my very first three-wheeler back in 1978 so but anyway I, I enjoy riding a motorcycle with gears and a clutch and you know the, the, the riding experience is more complete that way but uh, mechanical engineering here building here is on the left um, and so I'm basically at work here's some pedestrians Watch these little kids. They're checking us out. Look at them checking, checking, checking. Yeah, cool, huh? <laughs> and so, here we go. I think I can park my bike. It's so small, I don't have to park in a parking lot spot uh, because my parking space is kind of secluded back here, so hard to find me. But anyway, I can go down the sidewalk here and park right by a door that leads to my office. So anyway, that's my commute to work. My office is right behind those two glass doors there in front of me. I can park right here by the bike rack. And how perfect is this? So if this is your if this looks like your commute, the 2019 Honda Monkey Bike might be for you. For me, I think it's brilliant. It's a great ride, super comfortable. It does exactly what I needed to do. Come back later and we'll go on some more adventures. Thanks.